Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is calling shared desktop flows inside of Power Automate Desktop. Let's go. So this is a brand new feature. It is part of the June 2021 release, otherwise known as version 2.10. And using this feature, you can now go ahead and call another desktop flow from a desktop flow. Now, this is different than calling a subflow. A subflow is essentially part of the same desktop flow. There isn't just a different security model. This is something that's completely separate. So I can go ahead and create my own desktop flow. I can then call it from another desktop flow. Or alternatively, I can go ahead and create a desktop flow, share it with some other users, and they can therefore go ahead and call my desktop flow. And this is all possible through the new run desktop flow action that you're going to find inside of version 2.10. Now, the purpose of this feature really is so that you can create reusable automation scripts. So this could be things like logins or just maybe some common scenarios where I'm going to go ahead and do this once and then I'm going to share it so that we don't have people reinventing the wheel over and over and over again. Now, one thing I do want to call out that if you do use this feature and you do share it with someone else, there's two modes. One is going to be as a co-owner. As a co-owner, you can go ahead and modify it. You can see the run history. You can edit it, etc. Now, if I go ahead and basically give you run only access, you won't be able to go ahead and see that run history. That will be left to me as the owner, just because that can create some privacy challenges. So it does require some very careful thinking when you think about building this and returning errors back so that if someone is using your desktop flow, you're communicating the overall status properly. So something to think about it, but great feature. This is a big ask from a lot of customers. So great to see this feature in the latest release of Power Automate Desktop. Let's talk a little bit about the process in which you would use to go build this scenario out. So first off, user one will go ahead and build the desktop flow and provide or perform any testing that's needed. Then user one can go ahead and share that desktop flow with user two, and they can do so in, in essentially two modes. One would be as like a co-owner where someone could go ahead and make changes. The other would be in run only mode where essentially another user can only go ahead and call the desktop flow, but not make any modifications. And that's the situation that we're going to demo here in this example. So then user two can go ahead and build a desktop flow and add a run desktop flow action. So this is the new action that's available in the June 2021 release. And they, that action can be added to their process in the canvas. And that's what we see here in the bottom right hand corner. User two will then go ahead and configure any necessary inputs and outputs much like you deal with in a cloud flow. So if you've got a desktop flow where you've got say five inputs, you can go ahead and configure those five inputs. If you don't, what's going to happen is the default values will be used. Similarly, any outputs that are defined will be returned back to the calling desktop flow. And so at this point, once you've done configuring, you've completed configuring this specific action, user two can now go ahead and call that shared desktop flow. So let's go ahead, let's take a closer look at a demo. The scenario that I've got here is we've got a timesheet flow, desktop flow that's been created. And as you can imagine, you've probably got a lot of scenarios where you want to include the automation of timesheet submissions. And it's something that should be relatively consistent and something that you want to share so that you don't have people building many instances of a timesheet automation and as a result, you can build it once, then share it, and then let many other makers have the ability to go ahead and leverage your work. And so what this means is if there ever is a change to the timesheet application, it only needs to be changed in one place, assuming there's no additional parameters needed. And otherwise, you can ensure that your organization is more productive. So let's go ahead and take a look at the demo. Okay, so right now I'm going to perform the steps of user one. And so this is the, the original author of the process itself. And then user one will go share it with user two. Now, in this case, I just have my legacy timesheet application. 
I'm going to go ahead and populate five different inputs. Then I'm going to click a button and get the result. I've got all of my inputs defined here. So I've got five inputs, one output. This is going to be that timesheet submit status and I'll be able to return the value back down to the caller. So let's just go ahead, let's let this run once, just so you get a sense of what we're trying to do here. Okay, so that is the entire process, nothing too crazy, but at this point we're good with this flow, we've tested it it's ready to be shared with someone else. Okay, so still logged in as user one. I'm now in the Power Automate portal. I've clicked on desktop flows after clicking on my flows. And here is my process. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and share it. And here I'm gonna share it with user two. And in this case, I'm going to share it with user right. So I can go ahead and share as a co-owner but in this case, I don't want user two to be able to go ahead and modify it. I'm gonna share it as just a user. Okay, so now what I've done is I've logged in as user two and I'm in a, another Azure VM, not that that really matters that much, but just so you know, I've got sort of two separate instances going on here. And so what we can see here is since user one shared that desktop flow with me, I now see it in my list of desktop flows. When I'm in the Power Automate Maker portal, I have my desktop flow that I've created, it's going to call this shared desktop flow. And so we can see that in this list as well. Do you notice the different access roles? The one that was shared with me, I'm only a user. The one I created, I am an owner. Okay, so once again, still logged in as user two. I'm now in Power Automate Desktop and I've created my own process that is going to then go ahead and call the shared process. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we do have a new action that is available to us called run desktop flow. And so we can drag this onto our canvas here, and then we can go ahead and configure it. When I go ahead to select the desktop flow that I want to run, I can see any of my flows, or I can see any shared flows, right? So here's the shared desktop flow that was shared with me, I can go ahead and select it. Now what happens is when I select it, any inputs that are required are now going to be displayed for me, or just like I would see inside of a cloud flow. So these are those inputs, these are the default values. I also have outputs. So in this case, there is an output being returned. I can go ahead and provide a name for that output as well. I already have this configured. So I'm not gonna go ahead and uh, configure it once again. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna be able to go ahead and open up an Excel spreadsheet. And within this Excel spreadsheet, I'm going to read through each one of the rows and then retrieve data from that row that we will then send to that shared desktop flow so that we can drive that timesheet application. So that is what is happening in the first few actions here. We're gonna launch that timesheet we're gonna get the first free row on that specific worksheet itself. Then what we're gonna do is read the values from the worksheet and we're actually gonna use the output from the previous step so that we know where we have data, right? So I'm gonna start with column one, but row two, because we have a header, so I don't want to include the header information. I know that I have five columns, so we're gonna include all five of them. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the last row and, or the first free row and then subtract one um, which will give us the last row that contains data. We're then gonna go ahead and close that Excel spreadsheet. And then what we can go ahead and do is do a for each on our Excel data. And this was essentially the data table that was returned from our read from Excel worksheet action itself. We'll loop through it. And for every row that we have data, we're gonna go ahead and call the shared desktop flow. And then what we can do is we've got a current item. So basically you can think of it as a row in a result set. For each row, we can go ahead and access the columns that are part of it. And that's a zero based index. So zero would be column one, one would be column two, et cetera. And we'll populate all of these values and then we'll send it down to the shared desktop flow. Now the shared desktop flow is gonna return an output called timesheet submit status. Now here, just to sort of prove how this works, I'm gonna just do a check and provided everything successful, 
you know, we're just going to continue on our with our loop. If we did have an error, we're going to pop up a message. Now, naturally, you'd want to handle that a little bit differently. Maybe you would update the spreadsheet to say, hey, this row failed, things of that nature, but that's not overly pertinent for this specific demo. So let's go ahead. Let's now run the demo. I will speed this up. Naturally, this does take a little bit of time to run. So, uh, you know, mileage, mileage may vary, but you will get to see this run in the overall experience. Okay, so that concludes the execution of this desktop flow. So just as a recap there, what we saw was user one went ahead, created a desktop flow experience they wanted to share. They shared it with another user, so user two, and that user two can only go ahead and call it. They, they can't modify it. The other thing to note is that they can't also see the run history. The run history belongs to the owner. And so as a result, anyone that's using it that just has run only access won't be able to see the run history. So it is important that whoever is building the desktop flow that's going to be shared is implementing some sort of exception handling, returning errors properly to the caller so that they have a good sense of the status of the process. Because if it's just running, say, unattended, they may not know that like there's actually is issues downstream. So it is important that you're bubbling up the appropriate exceptions and notifications if, if necessary as well. So this is a pretty exciting feature. I think this is something a lot of customers have been looking for. It's super important for people to be productive and you don't want people reinventing the wheel and you want a lot of your processes to be consistent. So where you can have some of these enterprise shared flows, it does go a long way for organizations. Hopefully you enjoyed this particular video. If you're not following me on Twitter, you can find me at Weirzy. You're obviously on YouTube, but likes, subscribes, comments are always welcome. So thanks again for checking out this video and we'll see you next week. Take care and have a great week.